Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Bike Chat Friday from TKD Coach Academy. This week we're going to look at four different types of footwork and how they contribute to your sparring game. So if you think you could level up your footwork or that better footwork would improve your sparring game, this is the episode for you. Everybody, welcome back to Fight Chat Friday. So the footwork that we're going to be looking at today, we're going to kind of bring them into some broad terms. So we're going to look at how to look at your footwork from a point of view of setting up attacks, mm. how to put you in the correct position for good counterattacking, some evasive and lateral movement, which is also very important, of course, and as well, some ideas that we have to maybe almost force some reactions that you can use to kind of make a bit of action happen. So we're going to kind of look at those four broad terms and some steps and some patterns that you can kind of work on and look at and see what, okay, maybe that's something I'm going to pull into my game and that will be useful for me. So I think this episode will be quite useful for people because footwork is something that people really focus on as an important factor. And we did do a poll as well on the YouTube group that we've seen that most people are actually looking to get their footwork for counterattacks, which mm. makes sense. So um, we will be looking at that and give you some good ideas on that as well. Yeah, for sure. And I suppose one thing to talk about before we start is you can't ever really separate footwork from distance or from the techniques that follow. So yeah. footwork, absolutely fundamental. It underlies everything, but it's always linked to something else. So your stance, uh, your facing, your, uh, your distance to your opponent, your speed and your tempo, all of that is either starts from the footwork or footwork plays a massive component in it. So, so let's just mm -hmm. be aware of that before we jump in and show you all of these fantastic competitors doing their stuff. Uh, we can't separate footwork completely from everything that goes on top of it. Yeah. So maybe let's jump right into those attacking setups. And uh, uh, we've got a lovely uh, flashy clip to start this off. Yeah, so here's Luke Woods. So he's very much, um, he likes to spin and get people on the edge. But you can see here how, like, when people aren't expecting something to come at them like this, they just almost freeze up. So the fact that Luke is so balanced, so composed on his, his steps, his footwork, his reverse steps, that opponents are just like, whoa, what's going on here? And they just back up. So it is a nice way to, to gain some forward momentum and to just put people on edge. So if you have this ability then it's a very very um kind of like almost something that you pull out of the bag every now and again just yeah. to keep people guessing and, and it's, it's a threat really isn't it yeah but i think you nailed it the most important thing in that was his balance and yeah you know he has the ability to change and reorient so he's going from backwards to forwards. so he has his uh, uh drop step here and then he's going forwards uh, and turns it into a forward movement really quite quickly and if at any point in time he finds his opponents in the right range, he's going to go. Mm. So the balance is the critical component. Yeah, we're not saying, right, watch this clip again and practice these steps yeah. one for one and practice them and put them into your uh, sparring. That's not how it works, but it's just the idea of the principle of when you have good footwork and you can move in different ways with composure that you can really control what happens and put people on the back foot. Something a little bit simpler to follow that then, we're looking at Adam Shelley and just the positioning of his feet as he uh, adjusts for the hands, I think, really in particular in this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we did a whole clip on this one, so check that out. We did a couple of weeks ago on foot positioning going from legs to hands and how it's so important for ITF, so check that out if you haven't. But the principle is very simple. You're trying to get your foot from side-facing to more full-facing or half-facing be able to punch correctly so that's a vital vital step for anybody who is looking to advance their attacks mm -hmm. and to um, really be able to punch in a correct range and then just a couple of test steps and kind of when we're talking about test steps we're talking about the the kind of things that uh you're moving into the the danger zone into the threat range of your opponent in order to see how they'll react and in doing so uh you're gauging their reaction and if they if they uh fail to react or they react, react in a way that's appropriate, you can follow through and throw the shot that you are you, you want to throw. And the people who do this most effectively, it's like they're not thinking about it. It's just something that's happening naturally. Mm. And then it's go. And we can see here with Colin Carl some really, really nice things that are done in terms of stepping in and out of range. And in particular, in the slow motion here, you can see his left foot getting outside uh, mm -hmm. of the, the front foot of his opponent. And that 
gives him a massive advantage in coming to hands. Yeah, especially in that particular stance where it's left v right. But yeah, the test step is an important one. It's basically you're using it to sneak into a bit of distance and also catch your opponent by surprise. It's essentially, it, it is what it says on the tin, you're testing them. If there's no reaction when you do it first, then you have a, an entry that you can sneak into there and make use of that throughout the match. So it's uh, you kind of use it as a test first, and then once that's ready, and you can kind of almost lure somebody in, that, that will be there then. Uh, we're a bit biased in the first few clips, being Irish, of course, but here's uh, Ukraine as well using a great test step. So you see he's testing, he's fainting in and out, gets a little bit closer with that step, and that also breaks the rhythm. So it's yeah. like in, out, in, out, in, in, out. And that, that rhythm change catches people by surprise. And one of the things that we can really do when we're watching back, uh, you know, exciting matches, top-level competitors, start to forget about the upper half. You know, if you can kind mm. of... Uh, put that fight on full screen and watch what the, the lower half of the body is doing and how the distance changes between people and even start to consider the stance very much as a, a time battery. So like when you close the distance to your opponent, you are now faster. So when you start from closer, you're faster. That's kind mm -hmm. of, you know, no matter what, yep. if train leaves station A going to station B, you know, if, if train leaves station A, but then and then we start it, it's just much better. If you've already started, you have an advantage over your opponent. So. There's that logic. And then we have two feet. We're not on one fixed point. So the technique that we choose matters. So if I kick with my front leg, well, the position of my back foot is what matters. How close is my back foot to my opponent? And then vice versa, if I go to my hands, the position of my front foot is much more relevant because I'm going to be putting my weight there and pushing off that front foot. So, you know, start to watch your fights, I think, from the hips down as well and you might learn mm. a little bit more about uh how your footwork is playing into the game and, and how the balance works on that as well because yeah. as you said if one foot is strained too far from the other you're not going to be able to explode with speed um so you got to be aware of that as well there's a, a nice fine balance you need there you don't want to be too narrow you don't want to be too long it's just finding what's right for you mm. so let's have a look at some counter-attacking options yeah and obviously this is one of the ones that people were most interested in um, and there's some lovely options here. So Keen Ince is doing a great job here of luring his opponent in. So he's like pulling him in. So we yeah. kind of call this a little bit of uh, pulling. So he shifts back, takes the space, and then boom, launches back in. So he's pulling to go back, to go forward. So it's uh, a nice little option. But again, balance is very much key here. And he shifts back 50-50, so his weight stays the same. And you can see then that almost kind of gives him a launching platform off the mat so you see here he bounces into it so it's uh it gives him just a little bit of a pop step there into that as well yeah and you can't let your opponent have too much space so if you go back too far you're just going to get nailed yep. by the kick that or they'll, they'll trampoline off the floor and catch you um but the keeping the distance so that they only just miss uh does allow this kind of an option so yeah great pulling technique there yeah um, usually it'll be the first or second one really won't it oh definitely yeah mm-hmm and here's Adrian's student, Louise McCaw. So she is actually an absolute merchant at countering and using angles really, really well. So you see that she comes off the line a lot. And we kind of have variations of this. We have like the pivot step hook. We have it with a jumping punch. We also have some options from uh, back kicks and things like that. But you see the angle she's creating is, is very much puts her in the driving seat, even though she's countering. So uh, very, very effective use of the footwork here. Yeah, and something that we really like when it works, Louise, the, uh, is making sure that uh, she's, you can see the, uh, on, on the edge here, getting those angles means she's not exiting. And, mm. you know, those warnings do add up. So making sure that when you're making your defensive shots, you're picking your counter shots, getting your head outside the, the, the shoulder of your opponent. You can see here we're buried in the corner, picking a good angle. Uh, allows her to reverse position. If she just moves to center after that, she now has her opponent uh, to the edge of the ring. Uh, as you can see in some of these uh, change-ups, you're going from a very, very negative defensive position and you're uh, swapping that around. And we have a good clip later uh, with Axel doing uh, very much that same thing. Um, yeah, very good. I think the angles are is an important factor when you're countering, especially coming off that straight line mm. is uh, always going to help. We then have uh, some very nice pulling actions as well here with uh, Neil leading into a great little back kick. Yeah, and I think this kind of links well as well with giving your opponent almost something that's too good to take up, um, to like not go for basically. So he's kind of 
baiting him in with his head. He's like, that shot's there, go take it, Cosman, and then boom. So uh, it, it it is kind of like something that links well together as well, trying to bait them in and use some upper body movement while you use the feet then to set the distance, give you a little bit of uh, time. So by using that switch step on the back kick, gives them just that half second extra to fit in the kick. Lovely. Yeah, and I love this. And you'd see it a lot with Catch as well. He's not afraid to take the, uh, the first shift back. Uh, yeah. And like very often when people are learning back, they want to pull the trigger straight away and they assume I just have to be faster. And mm. sometimes you just need to make that, you know, uh, half a stance of a shift first to take the sting out of, you know, the person is only explosive over the first uh, portion of their movement and after that the sting is out of it. So you can make that little pullback there like that and Cosman has the brakes on effectively when he gets hit. Yeah, we're going to look at the back kick in a little bit more detail next week. So make sure if you're not subscribed to the channel, do so now. And uh, we'll, we'll give a nice clip next week on some variations of the back kick as well. So that's something that came up on another YouTube poll that people are having some problems with the back kick. Yeah. So we'll definitely look at that. So check it out. So looking at the uh, forcing reactions, we've already seen some pulling there in relation to uh, Kean Ince and his backhand. Uh, Neil Ernest there with the, the back kick. Uh, and some really good examples of that type of footwork and the shots that can follow it from Luke Woods here. Mm. And what I love about this is he actually, like, the steps and the switches look complicated, but then he just goes to a basic side kick. And, uh, like, himself and Dennis Trappage, two very high intensity fighters here so like the intensity you need for this concentration and balance is even next level again so um but it's nice the way he kind of again similar to neil he's giving him options of okay take this take this take this and then yeah. he, he sets you up with a little bit of a counter so uh again the, the balance i think is the key and luke always moves both of his feet it's very rare he will kind of extend past his 50 50 weight distribution and i think that's very important yeah, and I think just to draw a key distinction between this and what we had from, say, Keen Ince earlier, we have pulling where it's drawing your opponent about the ring and looking for them to overextend, where what this is, it's stepping into your opponent's space and asking them to kick and leaving them short. So mm. you're, what, what you're doing by closing the distance to them is you're telling them, hey, there's a shot right here so that when I pull back, I don't have to go back very far. I don't have to judge how far they're going to go. I mean, they have to kick me where I am. So yeah. when I step into that space, they have to kick me where I am, which means I can just move back to where I was and then take the next shot. And that little turning kick there is a great example of it where uh, Luke just kind of steps into the space uh, and, and the side kick even to follow, but where Luke just steps into the space, there's a shot he can step away from and the turning kick is right there. Yeah, it's important that he has shots off these variety of steps as well. So Luke is able to try any shot you want in the book. So mm. that is another factor, you know, if you're doing a lot of these steps and spins, reverse spins, etc., and then you don't have anything to work off from it in case they do bite. Yeah. Like that's obviously another issue to be aware of. You need a plan. So mm -hmm. I think the last category of stepping or footwork that we have here, and there, there are others that you could divide it into, these aren't exhaustive, but this is the one that I think most people thought of when, yeah. you know, we talk, mentioned the idea of footwork. And it's, uh, it's funny that, I think the reason for that is when we go lateral, when we start uh, evading, it becomes like, oh, well, all we're doing is moving the feet now. So it's very purely footwork, but it's still, it, it should have a focus. It should still have a goal. So let's have a look at a couple of people who do this exceptionally well, and they make this avoiding very dangerous. Yeah, I think that's that's the, the trick. Julio's a king at this, and I think the idea is he leads the dance. So yeah. although it looks like he's on the, like, the defensive side, He's that step ahead and he's luring his opponent in um, and he, he's he's leading the dance and he's the, the one that kind of is in control of where we're going, what yeah. direction, what speed. And I think that that's key. And like, if you want to look at some good evasive movement and how you can set it up into counters, check out Julio's clips because he's he's very, very good at this. If you get a, if he gets a lead and then it's like the, the last, I don't know, 40 seconds, 30 seconds of a match of round two. Mm. It's very hard to catch him. And chances are you'll overextend and he'll count to you anyway. And as much as it looks like, sometimes people walk away from watching a match with Julio and they feel like he was on you know, on his bike and on the edge of the ring the whole, the whole fight. If you stop and you go back and watch it, you look at how active he is with his footwork. Mm. I think that's a huge difference as well from some of these top people compared to... Um, uh you know some more novice fighters like 
people tend to bounce for the sake of bouncing. They, you know, they, they, they react to what they're seeing and they, they kind of get to this point where it's like, oh, no one's done anything for a second here. I suppose I should pick up my front leg. And it's the degree to which Julio's movement is both purposeful, uh, but also almost automatic. You know, mm. it, it's he's not concentrating too hard on how his feet are moving, but he's presenting way too much information for his opponents to process. There's too much going yeah. on there. And I think that's exactly. where... Be- Go ahead, Richie. Yeah, I was just going to say, because he does it so often, it's his world. Yeah. So then when you come into his world, then, of course, he's going to have the advantage. Um, and it just looks like he's playing, and that's exactly. the key to it. This is this is our, our all-time favorite, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it does come off quite a bit, but uh, when you look at it again, it's very much the same ideas. There's mm-hmm. just, uh, Miwash is that much more grounded, I suppose, uh, in terms of how he moves. Um, you know, he, he takes a longer stance, he sits closer to the floor. Uh, you know, there's a, a little bit more shoulder movement, I think, in, in what he does. But all of the basic principles are the same. Yeah, well, of the clip of him there landing the three turning kicks to the body because it just shows that he's always on balance and it's so important. So that's, I think, one of the biggest factors and almost common occurrences we've seen through all these clips is that, like, you you can't just move without any kind of, like, um, anchor to the floor because you're not going to be able to launch shots. So you might be able to set somebody up, they follow you, and then you are not going to be able to launch back. So that footwork then isn't going to be really effective. That's it. He keeps the center of gravity relatively low all of the time. Even when he's making these like escape runs to the side that you see in a moment, you can look at where his center of gravity is relative to his base of support. So, you know, he he is not uh, bouncing up high into the air. You see as he escapes here in the next one, um, you know, a little bit high there maybe, but they, with the jumping punches, but the, you know, he tends to stay quite low. He drops the shoulder. His feet are kind of coming under him and, uh, you know, like that. Very, very balanced. And I think that is definitely the key. Mm, yeah, definitely. Very, very, very slick. Very slick. Um, this is just fun. Yeah, there, there's Axel with the, the X-ray. Again, somebody who's always moving, always light on the feet and playful. I think that all of these things go together quite well mm. for people who have decent footwork. Um, and if you can be playful with it, Stay on balance, and it, like you're nearly always going to have your opponent then following the dance that you set out for them. So, um, yeah, very effective if you can get good at this. And how do we get good at this is the question. So, exactly. a lot of people think footwork is okay. Let's put out some ladders and just let's repeat the steps over and over and over again. But the context is so important, as we've seen with all these clips, because it depends where your opponent is, the distance between you, uh, like the steps that they throw, their body positioning. And as well, how they react to your steps yeah. at that higher level with the examples from Luke, from Milos and Julio as examples. So um, we can't just stay at that. Let's practice the steps. We got to bring it into the context. And that's the key. So we have a couple of, um, I guess, graphics here to we, Adrian, that we can show people as a guideline for that. Uh, you might be one ahead of me there. Um, but. <laughs> Uh, but certainly I know what we have prepared is quite a bit on the member side of things where we will be taking people through that progression. And I think the things that we're talking about most of all, and, uh, when it comes to this is we're taking something that, okay, you might need to establish the principles when you're learning your basic kicks. How do I move my feet? How do I set this up? How do I carry myself when I punch? But until you have resistance in the form of an opponent, there's a lot of things that just don't get learned. It's very, very hard. There's too too much that you could tell the person because, again, the footwork isn't just what your feet do. It's how do you ca- carry mm. your body over your feet. Your footwork changes if you're side-facing, half-facing, lateral-facing. Uh, it changes if your body is inclined forward, if your body is central, if you're leaning. You know, it, it, all of those kind of things affect how your footwork goes. And it's very inefficient to teach them one by one by one. What you want to do is create you know, a set of uh, challenges in the environment to let two players solve a problem, create problems from each, for each other, and let basically that footwork organically develop. Yeah, because I'm only playing by myself if I take a step a certain way and it's not relevant to you if yeah. we're both sparring because maybe I step to the left for no reason and then all of a sudden you nail me with a kick. 
Whereas it really much depends on the context of the, the, the opposition. You can't just go out there and roll off and ream off some footwork patterns that you've nailed down. It's not going to work like that. So you have to feed off the, the information your opponent gives you. And that's what the high level guys do really, really well. Yeah, for sure. So again, just to remind you, we do have a member section now. So uh, for the, the channel members, we are producing extra videos every week, which basically take the concepts that we've talked about, discussed and investigated in our Fight Chat Friday. We look at how we're implementing those in our own training classes, talking through what our logic is, uh, what the, the reason for the progressions are. And you get to see our students trying to tackle a lot of the same things uh, and us trying to solve all the problems that you'll be solving yourself whether you're a coach, whether you're a competitor, or whether you're just interested in improving your sparring. So if that sounds like something that you could uh, get your teeth into and that would be helpful to you, jump over onto the member side of the uh, YouTube channel and uh, we'll be waiting there with plenty more content for you. Absolutely. And stay tuned for next week's Back Kick episode and we'll see you then.